Hi, welcome to AWS Storage Day. My name is Ashish Palekar. I am a product manager on the EBS team, and I also take care of our snapshots business. Today, I'm going to cover what's new with EBS, uh, along with some exciting announcements uh, that we have for Storage Day. Before we begin and dive into the capabilities of EBS, I wanted to lay out how we think about uh, the block storage portfolio in the AWS context. There's EBS volumes. So think of things like GP2, IO1, ST1, SC1. Uh, we have EBS snapshots, which are point-in-time copies of EBS volumes. Uh, think of things like backups, uh, making uh, Amazon machine images or armies. Uh, then we have instance storage. Think of it as temporary storage that is available with EC2 instances. And then we have data services with things like Elastic Volumes and Data Lifecycle Manager. When we talk to customers about why they use EBS, it is because EBS delivers on the functional needs that those customers have, be it performance, ease of use, high reliability, scalability, security, and cost effectiveness. So when our customers look for volumes that have 64,000 IOPS and 1,000 megabytes per second, they use our provision IOPS IO1 volume, which delivers it with five nines of availability and between 0.1 to 0.2% annual failure rate. With a few simple clicks of a button, you can increase or decrease the performance, you can add capacity, you can change your volume types. Security continues to be our number one priority, and recently we announced a capability of uh, enabling encryption by default with a single click setting uh, at an account level for a region. And all this is accomplished while keeping cost effectiveness and scalability in mind. It is because of these capabilities that our customers use EBS for a wide gamut of applications, be they enterprise applications like SAP ERP, Oracle ERP, Microsoft SharePoint, Microsoft Exchange, be they relational databases like SQL Server, Oracle Database, uh, MySQL, or Postgres, uh, be they non-relational or NoSQL databases like Cassandra, or MongoDB, or CouchDB, be they big data enterprise applications, or if even if they are file uh, workloads like SIFS NFS, uh, rendering or encoding. EBS, with its combination of feature functionality covered with uh, availability and reliability, helps customers deploy these applications within AWS. Now, let's take a look at the innovation that has been going on in the EBS space over the last year. Here are the major launches within the portfolio. We have launches uh, on EBS volumes. We have capabilities uh, like DLM that we've been innovating on for snapshots. With data services, we have some new capabilities uh, that, that we've launched. And on the instance side, uh, we've been ratcheting up the amount of performance between EC2 instances and, and EBS volumes. While I won't cover all of these features today, I want to dive into four specific features that we think are extremely helpful to customers as they think and plan their workloads on AWS. Let's dive into them one by one. Let's start first by taking a look at IO2. Before we dive into the features of IO2, let's talk about IO1. Customers use IO1 for large database workloads for mission critical and business critical applications where they need sustained high performance. Uh, customers use IO1 when they want uh, IO consistency um, and when, when they are looking for performance uh, that, that, their, that their applications need. Customers love IO1 and the flexibility of uh, increasing IOPS and decreasing IOPS um, as, they, as they need it. When we asked for customers about feedback on IO1, um, they gave us two, two things. Uh, one, they said as customers are deploying uh, business critical and mission critical applications, they would like to further reduce the uh, probability that they have an application level failure. And that meant they wanted us to go increase our durability. The second thing customers told us is they would like to have more performance uh, and not have to over-provision their storage in order to get that performance. So listening to that customer feedback, we've done exactly those two things. So you have all the goodness of IO1 coupled with a couple of new features in IO2. One is high durability, which is five nines of durability, which is 100x more than IO1. And the second is our IOPS to GB ratio, which is 50 in IO1, 
we have now increased to 500 in IO2, which means a 10x improvement in terms of IOPS to GB. And all of this at the exact same price as IO1. So all the performance capabilities going, going all the way up to 64,000 IOPS, 1,000 megabytes per second, 16 terabytes of capacity, coupled with five nines of durability and 500 to one IOPS to GB. And here's some early feedback that our customers are giving us about IO2. So at Salesforce, they are designing for an always-on experience and need highly reliable storage. Having 5.9's durability allows them to meet and exceed their customers' expectations. When we look at uh, the feedback from CloudReach, uh, similar story there. Uh, they are looking to reduce the risk of downtime. Having a volume that is 5.9's durable gives them that. And with the added performance capability, that means that they are reducing their cost by not having to over-provision storage for their performance needs. Next, let's take a look at EBS Direct APIs. To give a little context, up until reInvent of last year, when you wanted to access data from a snapshot, the only way to access that data was to create an EBS volume. And the only way you could create a snapshot was by taking it and creating it from an EBS volume. Last reInvent, uh, we launched a couple of APIs um, which, which started an interesting journey for us. What we'd launched was a set of read APIs and another set of APIs that allowed you to compare uh, the data between two snapshots. And what that meant is that our backup partners and other providers that are looking to provide backup capabilities to their customers can now improve their backup speed by up to 70%, all the while reducing the cost to their end customers. This is pretty game changing because now backup providers without having to use EBS volumes can directly access snapshots, compare the data, and therefore enable their customers to save cost, but also take more granular backups of their, of their EBS data. So we are excited by the level of adoption and traction that we are seeing on the read APIs. But along the way, we noticed another capability that our partners were asking for. So when customers have block data that is not on AWS, uh, as an example, either on-premises or, or, or somewhere else, what they were doing in order to bring that data to AWS is they were replicating it to S3. Then they would take that data in S3, restore it to an EBS volume. And now that it's an EBS volume, uh, they would take snapshots, copy it to another EBS volumes, all the normal operations that customers would customers would, would do with EBS volume. We saw an opportunity to improve that experience. And so this July, what we launched is EBS Direct Write APIs. You can now, from your block storage, either on AWS or on-premises, directly write into a snapshot. And what that means is you no longer have to have that two-stage copy process of bringing it to S3, copying it to a volume. Second, you no longer have to have the cost associated with an EC2 instance bringing that copy over. And third, what that means is you can now take advantage of the fast snapshot restore or data lifecycle manager. And you can then manage this snapshot as if it were any other snapshot from any other EBS volumes. So in a series of two releases, what we have now done is enable snapshots to be able to act as a backup storage for any block storage, not just EBS. And, and we think that's an exciting opportunity for, for our customers. The next fast snapshot restore. So before we talk about fast snapshot restore, let's talk about the problem statement. When customers access the data from their snapshots when they're creating an EBS volume, that data is lazy loaded. What that means is the data is loaded in the background um, and, and gets populated in the EBS volume. For most applications, that is fine. Um, and, and, and their ap applications can, can work. Customers who have random access applications, so think of these as applications that are accessing different parts of the volume uh, in an unpredictable manner. What happens is they could access parts of the volume in which the data has not been loaded from a snapshot into an EBS volume. And because of that, these applications encounter a latency impact, what we call a get fault. So customers worked around that problem. And 
pre-warm or initialize the volumes. And they would use an application like Iometer or FIO and do essentially a block walk of the entire volume and thereby initializing the entire volume. So we observed this pattern and, and customers came to us and said, hey, can you guys address this? And so the capability that we came up with is what we call Fast Snapshot Restore. The way Fast Snapshot Restore would work is, think about a regular snapshot. You can enable that snapshot for Fast Snapshot Restore. And once it's enabled, in the background, it will load data and it'll pre-initialize at about one terabyte an hour. Once it's fully pre-initialized, you can then launch up to 10 volumes simultaneously. Right? And what it does is, it allows customers to manage their RTO and get predictable uh, loading time. Uh, you get speed uh, by accessing the data instantly. Uh, you can scale uh, by allowing you to, to simultaneously load up to, uh, up to 10 volumes. Uh, and you don't need the cost of additional EC2 instances. And this allows you uh, to get your recover, improve your recovery time objectives by up to 6x. Um, FSR can be enabled at any point uh, after a snapshot is created, but that allows you to completely eliminate uh, initialization or pre-warming step um, if that's what your applications needed. Here's a customer example of how Experian is taking advantage of fast snapshot restore. Within Experian, uh, uh, there's a team called the Ascend platform team uh, that builds analytics platforms. Experian uses EBS and fast snapshot restore for accelerating their development and recovery. And, and what that does is it enables their customers to test, analyze, and manipulate about three petabytes of data. In their own math, it reduced their development time from years to 90 days. Right? It's game-changing from, from an experience standpoint, and, and it helps restore their customer data within minutes. So, if you have an application where you, you are restoring data from a snapshot, use Fast Snapshot Restore. It'll cut down the amount of time you have to spend pre-warming, initializing, and, and thereby make it faster for you to build your applications, to deploy at scale, um, and, and in general, enable your customers to access the capabilities of EBS. The next capability I want to talk about is multi-attach. So before multi-attach, if you had an EBS volume, it was attached to a single instance, and you could attach it to a single instance within that same AZ. However, customers came to us with applications that need access to a shared block storage device. And so that is what we built, uh, is this capability we call multi-attach. With multi-attach, a single provision IOPS volume can now be connected up to 16 EC2 Nitro instances within the same AZ. All those instances can now share the performance of, um, of that provision IOPS volume. Now, bear in mind that because these are applications that are accessing the shared block storage, um, at the storage level, there is no, we are not doing any IOP fencing. What that means is you need application level IOP fencing and coordination. But with this capability, customers can build applications that allow them uh, to either read in parallel, if it's, a, if it's a read type workload, or be able to build availability uh, for their applications. Let's take a look at an example of a customer that's doing this with multi-attach. So Zoom Agri has a machine learning workload. They have about 50 million plus small image files. And when I say small, think of it uh, as 40 kilobytes in size of Bali grain images. And these files are stored in S3. Uh, their workflow is taking those files from S3, loading them into block storage, and using it as their machine learning training workload. And the goal behind that training is to enable uh, the neural networks to identify specific strains of Bali which their end customers can use. Now, with multi-attach, what Zoomagri is able to do is load that data a single time into a provision IOPS volume, share that volume with P3DN instances, run their analytics. And this achieves a couple of things. One, they have to load the data once, so it cuts down in the time to load data. Uh, because they can now share their performance, their analysis completes faster, 
And, and because it's a single storage uh, shared between all those instances, their costs are lower. So they are able to achieve uh, faster turnarounds in their, uh, in their ML training workloads uh, by using multi-attach. Now, let's switch to what's new. I want to talk to you about our data lifecycle management feature, which is Army lifecycle management. As a reminder, data lifecycle manager is a capability within EBS that helps you from a retention of snap, uh, essentially a policy-based retention of snapshots. Um, so you, with, a, with a single policy, you can, you can create snapshots, you can delete snapshots, you can maintain a count of snapshots, you can have age-based retention, and very recently we also announced multiple schedules within a single policy. Today, we are proud to extend that capability to armies as well. Armies are built on snapshots. And what customers came and told us is, well, it's wonderful that you guys are helping us manage snapshots, but I manage snapshots as armies. And, and therefore, help me manage and clean up my snapshots uh, that are as, as a part of the army life cycle. And that's precisely what we are doing. We will identify EC2 instances using tags. Our policy-based management will automate the retention and cleanup of armies. We will control costs and the same process that applies to snapshots in terms of counts, in terms of age-based retention, will apply to army-based lifecycle management as well. And it, again, gets you all the goodness and capabilities of Data Lifecycle Manager. And much like the rest of the capabilities, it's also free to use. So what are our key takeaways for today? We talked about IO2, which is 10x the IOPS density and 100x the durability at the same cost as IO1. Uh, we talked about fast snapshot restore and how you can restore data from snapshots to volumes without initialization. We talked about EBS Direct APIs, how you can read and write directly from EBS snapshots, enabling you to now use snapshots as backup for any block storage. And then we talked about extending Data Lifecycle Manager to now manage armies uh, in addition to snapshots. We believe that these combination of capabilities should enable you to take your applications that are running on-premises, bring them to the AWS cloud to take advantage of the simplicity, the scalability, and the cost savings that, that the AWS cloud provides. Our call to action would be to learn more about the IO2 volume, go visit the EBS webpage. To learn more about instances that might suit your workloads, please visit the EBS optimized EC2 instances webpage. And then, in the not too distant future, we have reInvent coming up. And we have five sessions uh, that are going to go into even more capabilities about EBS. And we have some exciting capabilities lined up for reInvent as well. So looking forward to seeing you guys uh, on those reInvent sessions. Otherwise, thank you for your time. Thank you for listening to the session. And we hope you're able to take advantage of these capabilities for your workloads running on EC2 EBS. Thank you so much.